First, you have to suffer, die, then you get glory. Remember, we're preparing you to die well. Jesus died well because he is the Son of God. He is the Savior. But uh, many of God's saints have died well. Paul died well in Christ. The martyrs of the Reformation died well in Christ. The covenanters in killing times died well in Christ. John Wesley uh, retorted to one of its critics. He said, at least our people die well. I have a, a friend and a co-pastor, uh, Roger Wagner, uh, in Chula Vista, California. He says, you know what the pastorate is? It's just basically preparing our people to die and, and to face, face the Lord. Will you die well? Will I die well? That's a legitimate question. Well, let's, we're learning from Paul. We're going through the pastoral epistles, and we're now in 2 Timothy, and we're going to race through this. But uh, to die well, I think you need to heed Paul's words to Timothy in chapter 2 and 3. Uh, so uh, let's hear the word of the Lord. We'll do it in uh, consecutive chunks as opposed to reading the two chapters together. To die well, first of all, you need to be a serious spiritual soldier. No, no fun and games, no civilian mentality. You need to be a serious spiritual soldier. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. You then, my child, find help and our strength or grace that Jesus Christ gives. And the things that you have heard from me before many witnesses pass along to trustworthy persons who will be competent to teach others also. Endure your share of suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. A soldier avoids being involved in everyday business activities so that he may please the one who enlisted him. Again, an athlete isn't awarded the winner's wreath unless he competes according to the rules. It is the laboring farmer who deserves to have the first share of the crops. Consider what I'm saying. The Lord will give you understanding in all things. You need to be a serious spiritual soldier. You need grace to run the race. The Christian life is a marathon, not a sprint. And God needs to give you that, and, and you need to pass on the baton to the next generation of gospel preachers. You must have that attitude. Notice that the soldier, when he's on active duty, doesn't get involved in civilian affairs. The athlete competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer, <clears throat> not the uh, uh, dilettante who plays with the soil, but a real hardworking farmer expects to get the crops. So to die well... You need to live well by being a soldier, a serious soldier of the cross. <clears throat> Paul goes on, <clears throat> I think, to instruct us to die well. You need, above all, to remember and meditate on Jesus. You need to focus on him, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Look at verses 8 through 13. Remember Jesus Christ as one who has uh, risen from the dead, descended from David, according to the good news that I preach, for which I am suffering wrong, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure for the sake of the chosen ones, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy accurate. If we died with him, we also shall live with him. If we endure, we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Uh, do I need to say that to seminarians? Meditate on Jesus. Drink of him, eat of him, meditate on Jesus, endure hardship for the sake of God's elect. Uh, no real Calvinist is a, is a quietist. You know, actively seeking to please God. You don't sit around uh, just contemplating Christ, but you endure the hardship and you live through this. It, it's just clear. If we die with Christ, 
we've died with him, right? We'll live with him because of the resurrection. If we endure, there's the, the theme. We've got to endure. It's a marathon. We will reign with him. But the reality is, and we don't have time to go into it in detail, there is apostasy from our, not from God's election, but certainly from people. If we deny him, he'll deny us. Our brothers in China. We must be willing to be identified with Christ. We cannot wimp out. We, if he deny, he said that. If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. It's not work salvation. It's just a, it's a quid pro quo. You know, if you're mine, you'll confess me. And if he, we are unfaithful, which we usually are, what? He remains faithful because he can't change. We blow back and forth like the leaves falling off these trees. But Christ never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, then thirdly, not only must you be a serious soldier and you need to remember and meditate on Christ, thirdly, you need to live honorably, not contemptibly. Uh, just go through the rest of chapter 2. Remind them about these things, solemnly calling on them in the presence of God not to argue about words. That reminds me of seminarians. You know, not to argue about words since this is of no use and tears down those who listen. Do your best to, be pre to present yourself to God, tried and true, a workman who won't be ashamed, cutting accurately with the word of truth. But avoid religious chatter. Irreligious, excuse me, irreligious chatter, because it will lead even to more ungodliness. And their talk will eat away like gangrene. Included among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have missed the truth by taking poor aim, saying that the resurrection has already taken place, <clears throat> thus upsetting the faith of some. However, God's foundation stands firm, having uh, the seal inscribed on it. The Lord knows who belong to him. And... The opposite side of the coin, really. Let us all who name the Lord's name stand far off from iniquity. Again, I don't know if you've ever preached. I ran into a full preterist, and uh, that's the dumbest heresy I've ever heard of. If this is the resurrection, I've been ripped off. <laughs> if this is as good as it gets, this, this is not the resurrection. Well, Let's move on. Now, in a large house, there are not only gold and silver containers, but also wood and earthen ones, and some are for honorable uses and other for dishonorable uses. So then, whoever cleanses himself from these will be a container for honorable use, specially useful to the master, ready for every good deed. Now, we need to cleanse ourselves from now flee from youthful desires, but pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, peace with those who call on the Lord from a clean heart. But avoid foolish and undisciplined speculations, knowing that they breed battles. And the Lord's slave must not fight, but rather be gentle toward everyone, teachable, tolerant, in meekness correcting those who oppose, in hope that God may bring them to, by repentance into the full knowledge of the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, having been captured by him to do his will. And Paul wrote this before the internet. I said it before, stay off the internet. We don't need your drivel for the first five, ten years of your ministry. Go learn what it is to suffer with Christ and serve with Christ, and then come back and tell us how to run our theology. So to die well, we must be a serious spiritual soldier. We need to meditate and feast on Christ and thirdly, we need to be honorable and not contemptible. The fourth thing, we need to die well. We need to remember suffering is the norm. Let me say it again. It is the norm, not abnormal. <clears throat> Chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 9. But take note of this. In the last days, difficult times will set in. Paul and Timothy were in those last days, and we are. People will be self-centered, money seekers, braggers, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless toward family members, merciless, slanderers, uncontrolled, untamed, haters of good, informers, impertinent, conceited, 
pleasure-centered rather than God-centered, having a form of godliness but rejecting its power, also turn away from these such people. It sounds like the modern American church as well as the culture. From among people like these are those who worm their way into houses and capture weak women who are loaded with sins and led by all sorts of desires. Talk about the sexuality of uh, evangelists, etc., pastors, how many have gone down because of this, who are always learning, never able to come to a full knowledge of truth. Just as Janus and Zambra, uh, the Jews said that these were two of the magicians that along came out of the Exodus and helped to corrupt Israel. Just as Janus and Jambra opposed Moses, so also these people oppose the truth. They are persons with corrupted minds rejects when it comes to the true faith. But they won't get much farther because the folly of these people will be as plain to everyone as theirs also became. You, in contrast, okay? So there you have it. Suffering inside and outside of church is the norm. If you think that your pastorate's going to be pleasant, you're crazy. And, and there's a biblical principle, Satan followed. Strike the shepherd and what will happen? The sheep will be scattered. And you have double targets on you, front and back. From front, Satan, and on the back from the church. The one good thing I say about getting shot, you know, the, you know by your troops, you know. Stonewall Jackson got shot by one of his own sharpmen. Uh, the bullet goes in the front, comes through the back, it cleans out the wound faster. So the bottom line is you get shot at from outside the church and inside the church. And we know we can't guarantee that every person who claims to be a Christian will be regenerate and will have those things cleansed away and the fruit of spirit will begin to develop in them. Suffering, brothers and sisters, is not abnormal. It is the norm. I don't know if you've gone through this when you have friends fail you and, as we say in English, stab you in the back. It happened to me at another institution. Uh, I won't go into the details, but one day it, it occurred to me. Who, Scipione, do you think you are? You're a sinner. Jesus was perfect and he had Judas. Why, why would it be any different for you or me? He counts you worthy. If the teacher suffers, so will the student. Now, we don't need to become goofy as some of the early Christians did, going, me, I want to be a martyr. Here. I mean, really, they got to that point, right? Some people went crazy and thought, like, uh, somehow I'll, I'll be more pleasing to God if, if I get killed. It's the mentality that leads uh, in the Philippines to the flagellantes, where people think somehow carrying a cross and actually being crucified to it is imitating Christ. No, but you will suffer. You will suffer. And Paul gives you a good, uh, a good, a good uh, uh, model. Uh, if you want to study this, just study Stephen's sermon before the Sanhedrin, and he makes this parallel. Here's how you guys treated Moses, right? You treated the Son of Man exactly the same way. Which one of you, you know, of the prophets didn't you kill or beat up? Okay. And remember that parable. It's the inherit. it's the Son. They'll respect my Son. Really? Oh, he's the inheritor. If we kill him, we get the vineyard. That will happen to you. And again, 2 Corinthians says, God put... Paul said he put it through the mill so that he wouldn't trust in himself, but him who raises the dead. And why? So you could comfort others with the comfort with which God has comforted you. You see, that's what will happen. And finally, if you want to die well, real simple uh, last exhortation, stick with the word. <laughs> Preach the word in season and out of season. Look at how he finishes up. You and... and <clears throat> You, in contrast, as my disciple, have closely followed my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my endurance. 
my persecutions and the sufferings that I underwent at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I bore. But the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, all who want to live a godly life for Christ, what? Not might, will suffer persecution. That's not just the pastor, that's all the sheep. In fact, all who want to live a godly life for Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Evil persons and imposters will go on to their worst, deceiving and being deceived. You, brothers and sisters, you, however, must continue in those things that you have learned and are convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood, speaking to Timothy, you have known the sacred scriptures that are able to make you wise about salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. That well-known passage. All scripture is breathed out by God, is useful for teaching, for conviction, for correction, and for training in righteousness in order that to completely fit and fully equip the man of God, a, a picking up from the Old Testament, a prophet, a preacher, a man of God for every good work. You have to realize you have everything you need to do the job. You have the completed canon of Scripture. Preach the Word. Stick with the Word. You are not partially. You are fully equipped. In the Old and New Testament, you have everything you need to be a faithful pastor or servant of the Lord. Well, those are the f five things from these two, past, these two chapters. To die well, you need to be a serious spiritual athlete, uh, soldier. Secondly, you need to remember and meditate on Christ who's raised from the dead, who, who sits over the throne, on the throne next to the Father and rules over the nations now, not just in the future. He is king now. Thirdly, you need to be honorable and contempt, not contemptible and live your life in the light of that day when you'll have to give account. And realize, fourthly, that you are going to suffer because that's the norm. And finally, to die well, you need to realize you have everything you need. Imitate Jesus. Imitate Paul. Be an imitator of him as he is of Christ Jesus. Well, will you die well? I don't want to sound like Yoda, but die you will, young pastor. But will you die well? This is the way to prepare. It's a legitimate question because we all will die. And you can only die well by what? Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And Paul, who is a sinner, not like the Lord, who to some extent reflected his Savior. How can you prepare? By getting the mentality of a, a serious spiritual soldier. Marathon, not sprint. Lean on Jesus. Be honorable and not contemptible. Embrace suffering as the norm. And love, memorize, meditate, and use the sword of God, which alone, we can't go fight Muslims with the sword, except the sword of the Spirit. We're not allowed to play according to fleshly rules. If you do, I don't know about you, I've not been in the military, but one of the things that impresses me most about the military is to see somebody long service and what do they have, right? All those service ribbons, where they served, how well they serve, the commendations. To live and die well, and you will have ribbons from the grace of God to present back to him, and will be honored that any soldier would be proud of. Let's pray. Lord, help us to live well so that we can die well. And that means, Lord, we really need to see that we've been called to be like our Savior, who entered the world to fight and wrestle with and to die into sin on the cross so that we could be freed. Please lead us uh, to be people who are really great soldiers 
for Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our closing psalm will be 42b. 42b. And then you'll be dismissed.